What's up YouTube? My name is Marvin Aziz. I'm a freelance developer and today I want to show you how to go multilingual using Webflow and Crowdin. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. For full transparency, this video is sponsored by Crowdin. And a big shout out to them for making this video possible as with any of my videos, I'm still free to do and say whatever I want to. As some of you might know, I'm coming from a WordPress background and I'm used to using tools like WPML and Polylang. So I was looking for something similar in the workflow space. And as soon as they reached out to me and I had a look into the tool, I was like, this is basically what I've been looking for anyway, so um, might as well share it with the community, right? So um, yeah, I'm really excited to share this one with you. Let's, let's get into it. Crowdin is a localization software that helps you translate websites, mobile and web apps, um, software, documentation, games, emails, and many more content types. So basically, you can just start localizing your, your website, for example, and gradually make your whole company multilingual. So in Crowdin, you can make translations on your own, use machine translations, invite a translation agency, or use the Crowdin marketplace. You can basically invite anyone as a translator to your project, which is pretty awesome. So today I'll show you how to implement Crowdin using Webflow so that you can start automating your translations for your website and avoid copy pasting of content. Crowdin comes with two plans, Crowdin and Crowdin Enterprise, both with several pricing plans. And I'll be using the free version, um, which allows me to basically create a pr one private project and uh, multiple public ones. So let's get started. So this is their website and as you can tell, they have a couple of really interesting customers as testimonials in there. So um, it seems to be a great product from as far as I can tell, um, it's, it's a great tool for, for translations for sure. So make sure to hit that link in the description down below and check them out yourself. You can sign up and um, use their free tier for your first project. Um, just use your email address or continue with Google or GitHub or Twitter or GitLab or one of the other ones. And as soon as you're registered, you're going to land on a page that's similar to this one, right? Um, you would want to create your project. So what you need to do is give it a name. Right. You can choose whether to use a private or a public project for the public. Um, it's going to be visible for, for public access and the private projects are only be visible for the, for invited members. Right. So choose your source language. Um, for me, it's going to be English and the target language would be German as I am a native German speaker. If you didn't know, right. So just click on here. If you have any other language you want to translate into, let's say Spanish, for example, you can go ahead and click on Spanish, but I'm going to stick with German for now and create the project. So then you're going to land on a page which looks like this one. And um, it's telling you that you don't have any files to translate yet. So it's asking you to either upload files, use a sample, um, invite a developer or set up a custom integration. And that's what you want to do as a workflow designer or developer. You want to use their integrations. And if you scroll down the page, you're going to see Webflow custom integration down here. You click on that and you that's where you can set up your integration, right? So you definitely need your site URL. So it's important for your website to be publicly accessible and up and running um, with custom code 
activate it, right? So insert your URL. For me, it's going to be web to the flow.com if you didn't know. And you can click on site settings. So this was an important step for me to understand how Crowdon is actually working. Here you can limit the, the page numbers that uh, are supposed to be translated. Um, you can um, exclude certain paths of um, websites, for example, if you don't want the about page to be translated, right? Um, and you can choose what language detect type to choose from. Um, and this was important for me because you can actually choose how Crowden is detecting the language. So if you want to use, for example, a subdomain, this would look like something like that, right? en.google.com and en.google is the, the subdomain. If this is supposed to be in German, then I would write something like de.google.com, right? But if you want to use a subdirectory, you could go ahead and do something like google.com slash en, for example, slash de. Um, that's a subdirectory, but what we are going for is actually a query parameter because it's the most straightforward way, to be honest, right? So that would look like something um, um, question mark language equals D, for example, or EN. That's how Crowden is actually detecting your language and I leave it as is. Um, the default option with a query parameter because it's the most easy way you can go for. Right? Um, then you can choose whether to manually or automatically um, import the source, um, which is your website or web application. Right? So um, I will go for manually and I'm actually going to import now. And as you can tell, it's starting to scan the pages for all the strings on the page. You can see here, scanning the imprint and yeah, all of the other pages. It's going to take just a brief moment. And there we go. Now it has been importing, it has imported um, all the strings from your website to the project in Crowden. So you can actually go ahead and translate. But before we do that, um, let's go ahead and actually implement Crowden into our web um, into our Webflow project, right? So we have the um, the, the language switcher down here. Um, this will this is how Crowden will first of all detect the language, insert the language switcher, and load the languages from the Crowden source. Right, where we where we are going to translate all of that. So make sure to copy the script and let's go, let's jump into Webflow and see how we can implement it. Right. So um, as I am a big fan of uh, that FinSuite, I'm gonna use um, the FinSuite plugin up here in Candies. You can actually use the custom code tab and easily bring in the code as needed, right? So, boom, insert the code, I'm going to save it, and I am going to publish it. And that's it. That's for the technical side, to be honest. That's um, how you implement Crowdin into your Webflow project. But if you, if you don't have the FinSuite extension, you can go ahead um, into your project settings, open the custom code tab, and just insert your code into the header. Right. Make sure to save and publish, and then we are good to go. So let's actually go ahead and create some of our first translations. So if you go to home, you can see the translations and I'm going to click on German right now 
and open the source file. Now we're in the Crowden translation dashboard, right? As you can tell, it's also, I'm trying to translate my custom code. So what I can do about that is actually come up here and delete that string from translating. Boom. Okay. And now how this works is actually you can click on the strings on the left hand side and on the right side you can choose what to use as a translation right so you can go ahead and click here enter translation so sign up now would be um, registrier dich oops dich jetzt but what you can also do is actually use um, one of the suggestions um, Crowden is offering you. So check these out. Jetzt registrieren. Jetzt signieren. Jetzt sign. Yeah, not so good. But this one is actually pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on save. And it's asking me to um, double check because it's missing two non breaking spaces. But that's just the way it is in German. So. I'm saving it anyway, and that's how you continue doing your translations, right? Are you really, are you willing to really master Webflow? Bist du bereit, ein Webflow Master zu werden? That's that's pretty much the translation we use in German. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and that's how you pretty much go ahead and translate all of the strings you have on your website. And as you can tell, as soon as you, um, for the overview, as soon as you translated a string, it turns the little dot into green instead of red. So you know what, what strings you already translated. So if we go back to our web application, I'm going to open it straight away. You can tell that something's happening, right? So first of all, you can see the query parameter up here. So Crowden is actually automatically adding it to your URL in order to define the language displayed on the page at the moment, right? If I close my, my cookie uh, opt-in, you can see the little language switch down here, right? So currently it's um, in English. You can see the Powered by Crowden as well. And as soon as I switch it to German, we notice something changed, right? So this is in German, this is in German, this is in German, this is in German, right? So it, it actually took my translations and um, exchanged all of the English strings that are already translated, right? So these, for example, I didn't translate yet, but this one I did. And um, that is pretty much how it works. So you can see the query parameter change to DE and it's all in German. Another really cool feature they have is actually the in-context translation tool, right? So if you are in the premium tier, they offer you to translate your uh, strings on the page itself, right? So um, this is a preview of that, a demo. Um, you can see here, you, the, all the strings are, are surrounded by a little red box and you can actually click on that little icon here and the translation tab opens. It gives you suggestions you save the suggestion and all of a sudden it changes to German, which is really, really awesome. And I really think this is such a strong feature that, um, yeah, 
many people will be able to find out about that. So make sure to check Crowden out. If you have any questions regarding, regarding Crowden, um, make sure to contact them. It seems like they have a great support team and I really hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.